Hey everybody, welcome to the next episode of Bang Pop What, where today we're going to talk about the IWI Masada. Uh, we'll do kind of a quick debrief of why I got this gun and uh, maybe a quick uh, photo unboxing because I already shot it. Uh, and um, a quick breakdown of the gun, go through some features on the tabletop maybe. So uh, real quick, uh, in case you missed the first few episodes, this series is just about me being an old guy who just got into guns. And this is going to kind of document my journey along the way. Uh, I found the internet, especially YouTube, being super helpful with me and learning about guns. So I'm going to try to share my experiences as well. So uh, along the way, um, if you've missed some of the earlier episodes, the first gun I bought was a HK P30L, a wonderful full-size 9mm uh, semi-automatic pistol. The second gun I bought was a uh, 6R P226, a even more wonderful uh, full-size 9mm semi-automatic pistol. So I already have, and I have bought a rifle after that, uh, Caltech Sub 2000. But obviously, I already have two full-size 9mm semi-automatic pistols. The one thing I don't need is another semi-automatic 9mm pistol, which is obviously why I got the Masada, which is a 9mm full-size semi-automatic pistol. So uh, again, I never claimed to be smart, although I did tell my wife if I keep making videos about guns in their basement, uh, that we'll be internet gazillionaires eventually. So. Please, let's stick with that, and I'll give you an excuse to buy more guns and keep making videos. Real quick check of the gun. Uh, magazine out, empty. And through here, I checked it before, but just in case, there's the eyeball. So the pistol is clear. Uh, so I'll point the gun at you. Don't freak out the internet because that's bad practice. So uh, why this gun? Um, and once I started getting into pistols and doing research, um, I was just kind of learning about the different brands and guns and things like that. And then uh, I watched two videos, which I'll put in the description here, about the IWI Masada. Uh, IWI is Israeli uh, Weapons Industries. Uh, Masada roughly translates to fortress, I think, or fort. Um, so, um, but IWI, Israeli Weapons. I was fortunate enough, I guess you could say fortunate enough, to spend some time with, you know, had some experiences with the Israeli military uh, probably about 10 to 12 years ago. And it was a really interesting experience. And I have a massive amount of respect for the work those guys do. Uh, it's insane how good they are and what they do. So, uh, instantly, became, instantly became intrigued about the guns they made. They don't make that many, but they make some really good ones. Uh, and again, the two reviews I read, which I'll put in the in the thing, uh, are were glowing reviews about what a good value this gun as well. Because this guy is like half the price of my H and K or my Sig, less than half the more than more than half of the Sig actually. So, uh, amazing value for this gun. Um, and so I watched the videos, and I, then the local gun shop. Um, Ozark Armory in Springdale, Arkansas had one. I saw it, I touched it, I felt it, and it feels like a dream. I really think that I like all metal frames, but this is a polymer frame, and it just felt good in your hand the second you put it in there. So being a geek, an addicted geek, uh, I couldn't pass it up, so I got the gun. So uh, quick details about the gun. Um, it's got the Picatinny rail on the front for lights. It's got front cocking serrations, rear cocking serrations. It is ambidextrous, so you've got the uh, takedown lever on this side, along with your slide stop. Slide stop also on this side. And you also have the magazine release here and the other side. Another reason I like it, because I'm left-handed, so it was an amphibious, I mean, ambidextrous gun that I tend to try to find those because uh, most guns are made for right-handed people. Although, once I've started shooting, I found out that I tend to ride uh, the slide stop over here, which is a bad habit. Um, so, um, for what that's worth, I'm not sure if it benefits me having an, an ambidextrous gun or not. Uh, I will tell you that I do ride this one a little bit. So, it also has, while there's no manual safety on here, it does have the trigger safety, which is the little niblet there that you have to push down to pull it. If you try to pull the trigger without that, it doesn't move at all. Jesus, at all. Uh, but you push that guy in, and, and there you go. So, uh, quick look at the trigger. So, there is the first pull. Do a reset. And the reset is pretty short, like that. And one, and one thing I forgot to mention is also serrations on the front of this, which for me, again, I know you're not supposed to ride the front of the, of the rail, but it does help me sometimes when I'm getting my uh, gun positioned. I'll take that and pull it back further in, in my palm so I can get a good grip on the gun. Again, it is easy to get a good high grip on here. Um, these are all the stock grips that come on there. It does come with uh, two different back three back straps totally. Two, three, three back straps totally. This is the medium, there's also a small and a large in the box, but this one felt great in my hand, so I've not tried to switch it at all. 
Again, it does come with two 17 round magazines, so 17 plus one's capacity. Uh, and again, this gun, the second I picked it up, I shot it really, really, really well. Um, again, all the guns shoot really well. I think this just happens to be, this one to miss my hand in a way that I'm fairly accurate with it. So amazing, amazing gun. Um, quick look at what was in the box. Um, so I'll try to hold it up this way. So this is the first gun I bought that didn't have the hard plastic box. It kind of came with a bargain cardboard box. So I thought, oh, maybe I'm not gonna like this. But it turns out there's lots of cool stuff in here. Let me see if I can reposition this down a little bit. So there's the box. I already have the two magazines out. Again, two 17 round mags. Um, I think I read that they're steel mags. Uh, with the IWI logo on the bottom there. I can get that in focus. Trust me, it says IWI right here. And the rubber bottoms. They also things are designed to pull out in case you get uh, stuck inside your gun. Uh, open the box up. Tons of goodies in here. Owner's manual. Again, I read every word. Don't judge me. I know I'm still new. Uh, comes with the lock, which I still don't quite understand the point of, but it does have a lock in there. Um, it comes with uh, responsible firearms uh, information as well as some IWI goodies, I think. IWI sticker, uh, as well as the uh, pull on here uh, that you can put on your range bag or on anything that you want to put a pull on. So those are kind of cool. It also comes with, which I think, here are the back straps. I should slow down for a second. Here's the large and small back straps. Again, uh, I left the medium on there, but again, you can interchange those however you like. Um, it also comes with different optics mounts. I should call that when I went through the gun. On the gun, uh, it's already cut out for optics, and it'll take four different optics. It can take a SIG Romeo 1 or Romeo 1 Pro, I forget now. And it also takes the Trigger Current R uh, RMR, the um, Leupold Delta Point Pro, and the uh, Vortex Venom. Uh, and there's base plates in here for all those. I've not tried to put one on yet, although I will tell you, I want to put a Delta Point Pro on here because I've read good things about that one. Uh, although, but I'm afraid to because I shoot these iron sights really, really well. Uh, they're not glow in the dark sights, they're just standard sights, but I shoot them really, really well. I'll probably shoot a dot even better if I put it on there. But I've been reluctant to put a dot on here. This is the only gun I have that would take a dot. Uh, and I probably will get the Delta Point Pro at some point. Uh, but again, it takes any of those four. Um, so uh, that comes in that comes in the box. So quick, uh, maybe take down the thing. That should be the end of it, maybe. Um, so again, the magazine's out. Let me pull this guy back, lock it. As with any gun with a takedown lever like this, it's usually pretty easy. So let me see if I can do this in, in the air. Uh, pull this guy down, release the slide. I believe you have to pull the trigger. I'm gonna try it without pulling the trigger. And pull the trigger, and there she goes. Smooth as, so. Uh, there it goes, sorry. So it comes just like that. Here is the uh, grip module. The other thing I really forgot to mention, this is almost like the SIG P320, in that the only serialized part of the gun is the uh, fire control unit inside here. I'm not trying to take it out yet, but I believe if you just loosen the, uh, the takedown lever and pull it out, the whole FCU lifts out and you could do, you could make any gun you want to out of this thing essentially. Uh, although I've not seen an abundance of parts on the IWI website like I have SIG. Uh, later I'll review my SIG 320, which I can make into 10 different guns. I don't think I'm allowed to show that on YouTube, modifying guns, but anyway, uh, this is a, the only serialized part is the fire control unit, I believe. So there's, there's that. Then once you get the slide out, uh, you've got the spring here, which just pops out this way. I think that's called captured, where that doesn't come out. And then the barrel. Um, so I have it a little, a little too greasy maybe, don't judge me. I get grease happy with the, when I'm cleaning sometimes. I think the, this is called a hexagonal uh, thing inside there. It makes it spin differently. Uh, I don't remember what they said about it. And then here is the, the inside of the gun. So um, again, to put it back together, just reverse steps, barrel back in there. Put this guy back in here, as such. I have it backwards. So that guy just sits in there like clean like that. And then it just slides back on. Get it on the rails. It's easy to do it on the table. But once you get lined up, just pull it back. I don't have it lined up. It's hard, I know. Easy to do it on the table. So there we go, slide it on this way. Push all the way to the back until you get this little cutout in the slide 
over top of the takedown lever, which mine's sliding a little bit. Once you do that, just put the takedown lever back up, release the gun, and you're good to go. Couple quick checks. And there you go. Again, this is a phenomenal gun. It has always eaten everything I put inside of it. It shoots incredibly well. Again, all these guns really shoot well. I just happen to shoot this one as well as my SIG P226 actually. So amazing value for the money. I haven't gone down the Glock pathway yet. This is my first striker fire gun. Um, again, I was really kind of falling for a lot like hammer fire. Uh, but after reading the reviews, which again will be in the description of the two guys who I love to watch, uh, I really fell for this gun and it's an amazing gun. Uh, I, I'll get a Glock eventually and maybe compare the two. But right now, I cannot be happier with my IWI Masada. Thanks.